All right, so for today's online lesson, we're going to look at uh, quadratic equations, and we're going to set them up into vertex form, okay? So this is standard form. Again, most of you are familiar with this here. If I wrote x squared minus 6x minus 16, okay? That's standard form of an equation, okay? Uh, and then if I were to write this in factored form, again, we can go through the steps of factoring, but just to save some time, again, the factored form of this particular equation would be x minus 8, x plus 2, okay? So that's factored form or intercept form. In fact, I'll go ahead and write these to the side here. So this is standard form, okay? This is intercept form or factored form, okay? And then there's another form we're going to learn about called vertex form, okay? So, and the vertex form of this particular equation, I'll go ahead and write it here for you. Uh, it's going to be x minus 3 squared, and it's going to be minus 7. Yeah, minus 7, okay? So... That's the vertex form of this equation. So there's standard form, intercept form, vertex form. Now, just to kind of talk about this briefly, okay? So vertex form uh, tells us exactly where the vertex is. So we call it intercept form, the one in orange, because if we solve each parenthesis equal to zero, right? So if I were to solve this, uh, x would equal 8 for this parenthesis, and x would be negative 2. Those are the intercepts, right? So we call that intercept form because it tells us where the x-intercepts are. Okay, standard form, it's called standard form because that's the usual way we see these equations written. And vertex form, it's called vertex form because it tells us where the vertex is. Now, hopefully you guys have seen this before, okay? So, typically in vertex form, it's written like x minus h plus k, okay? And the vertex, another way of thinking about it is h and k, okay? So... We know it's, I know it's x, y, and you guys are like, well, why are you writing h and k? That's kind of weird. Because x and y already have a place inside the equation, okay? So in this particular problem, the red equation, x minus 3 squared minus 7, it tells me that the vertex is 3, negative 7. This is actually my vertex right here, this number, okay? So the way you think about it is you do the opposite of what's with x, okay? So it's x minus 3, so... Actually, x equals negative 3, and that makes sense, right? If we were to solve what's in there, x would equal 3, okay? And so it's 3, and then the number on the outside, the negative 7, is the y part of the vertex. So x minus 3 squared minus 7, okay? Now, here's the thing. How, let's say I'm given standard form. How would I figure out the vertex form? Right? Because, I mean, if I have standard form, I could find the axis of symmetry, then plug in that number to find the vertex. You could still do that, okay? But it's really important to see and know the vertex form because it actually is going to help us out when we move on to uh, horizontal and vertical shifts. Okay? So I wanted to show you all the different forms that we've talked about, and th tonight I'm teaching you about vertex form. Okay? But in order to teach you about vertex form, which, again, tells us the vertex, I have to teach you about completing the square. Okay? Completing the square. Complete the square. Okay? It's another way we can factor uh, quadratic equations. Okay? It's a different way we can solve them as well. But the big reason we complete the square is so that we can change a standard form equation into a uh, vertex form equation. So we can go from standard form straight to vertex form. Okay? So, standard form equation, eight, x squared minus 8x plus 9. So when I have this, okay, here's what I do to complete the square. So, and by complete the square, here's what I mean, okay. If in a square, okay, if I draw a square, both, all sides have the same length, right? So if this was 3, that means this side is 3, that side is 3, that side is 3, right? That's a square. But rather than giving you actual numbers, again, using algebra, what if I said, this was x plus 2, right? And this would be x plus 2, and so on and so forth through the other sides. So really, when you remember when you find the area of a square, it's length times width, okay? So if there was 3, it would be, so if I go back to the 3s that I wrote, okay? 
if I wrote 3 and 3, it would be 3 squared, which we know is 9. Okay? Same thing with variables. Whoops. If I wrote x plus 2, x plus 2, I would just write x plus 2 squared. Okay? So this is what we call a squared binomial, right? That when we complete the square, I need the length and the width to be the same thing. Okay? And we want a squared binomial. So what I do to get, achieve this is I need to manipulate the standard form equation to be the number uh, that I need to make this a uh, perfect square trinomial to give me a squared binomial. Okay? So the way we do that is we look at B right here. Okay? What's half of B? So what we're going to do is take B and divide it by 2. Okay, so half of a negative 8 is negative 4. And then what we're going to do is square it. So negative 4 squared is positive 16. Okay? So is 9 positive 16? No, it's not. Okay? So here's what I'm going to do for this problem. I'm going to actually create a space. So I'm going to rewrite the problem. x squared minus 8x plus something plus 9, okay? And in that space, I want to put exactly what I want, okay? I want to put exactly what I want in that space. Well, again, half of 8, or negative 8, is negative 4. Negative 4 squared is positive 16. So the number that would go perfect in my blank spot is positive 16, okay? And just go, let's go ahead and talk about this right now. A good mathematician, of course, knows we have to balance the equation, right? We can't just add something and not do, uh, balance it out. So if I add 16, I also need to subtract 16, okay? So if I add 16, I have to subtract 16. So I'm only going to focus on this part right here, okay? I'm only going to focus on that because this is what we call a perfect square trinomial. What I mean by that is, if you were to factor what was right there, okay, if we do the x-factor chart, again, 16 on top, negative 8 on the bottom, okay, so two numbers that multiply to give me 16, but add to give me negative 8, wouldn't you get negative 4 and negative 4, right, because negative 4 times negative 4 is 16, negative 4 plus negative 4 is negative 8, okay, and if you were to go through all the factoring, you would get an answer like this, x minus 4, x minus 4. Okay? It's the same exact thing, the same exact parenthesis. But we don't write it twice, we only have to write it once. And we write it as a, binomial, or a square binomial, right? Because it's the same thing times the same thing. So that's why we write x minus 4 squared. Just like the example I did with the orange square at the top, right? Same exact thing. All right, so that stuff in red turns to x minus 4 squared. And then I still have, out on the outside here, 9 minus 16, which actually gives me negative 7, okay? So, this is vertex form. So, I changed this up top, x squared minus 8x plus 9, into vertex form, which is x minus 4 squared minus 7, okay? And as we just talked about in the previous slide, this I can change into, uh, I can know what the vertex is, because now it's in vertex form, I know that the vertex is, I do the opposite of what's with x, okay, so if it's negative 4, the vertex is actually positive 4, and then the y part, I just copy what's on the outside, it's negative 7. So that is how you find the vertex uh, after you complete the square, okay? Let me do one more example to kind of go through it quickly. I know I kind of broke it down and uh, did it slowly here, so let's go ahead and do another one, but I'll do it a little bit quicker here. Okay, so let's say I had x squared minus 10x minus 12. Why not? Okay? So, if I have a minus, so, minus 12. I need to, if I want to complete the square, okay, and basically write it in vertex form, I need the number after 10x to be something specific, right? I need half of b, okay? So, half of b is negative 5. And then I need to square it, okay, which gives me 25. Negative 12 is not 25. So I'm going to write x squared minus 10x plus something, but again, we know our something is 25, okay, and then I write minus 12, and a good mathematician balances it out, so I'm going to subtract 25 here as well, okay. 
So after I get what I want, I'm focused just on this part here, which again, if you were to factor it, uh, you would get this. But here, let me show you a shortcut. Okay. So what you do is you take the square root of the first term, which is x, copy the first operation, which is subtraction, square root of the last term, which is 5. So x minus 5 squared. Again, if you were to factor that box, you would get the same exact thing. It would be x minus 5, x minus 5, but you don't write it twice. You only have to write it once. Okay, and then negative 12 minus 25 would actually give me negative 37. So that is how you complete the square. And now that we're in vertex form, okay, I know that the vertex of this problem, again, we do the opposite of what's with x, so it's actually positive 5, and then we do whatever it says on the outside for the y part, so negative 37. Okay? So that's how you complete the square to get to vertex form. And then once you have vertex form, it's very easy to point out the vertex. So that's the whole video. Uh, again, I hope it was really helpful. And uh, again, if you have any questions, feel free to email me or bring your questions to class.